Hi, this little quickie is all about Joe Blocks and a little bit about sign bars. Now, Joe Blocks. I have two sets here. I have a full metric set, 88 blocks, and I have a half imperial set. Joe Blocks are steel, hardened steel, or ceramic blocks that are incredibly, incredibly accurate. Now, that's important because the accuracy of your Joe Block is responsible for the accuracy of all measurements in your shop. Because obviously, you're going to be calibrating all your measuring instruments starting by or from these Joe Blocks that are also often called gauge blocks. Now, gauge blocks or Joe Blocks are very expensive. So, it is quite likely that you don't have any in your shop. Well, don't worry. You can buy much less expensively uh, small gauges that serve the same purpose as far as calibrating your measuring instrument goes. And we have an example of that right here where we have a small caliber that we can use to calibrate our micrometers and from there move on to calibrate all our other tools. Gauge blocks can be used in several ways. And the three most popular are comparative measurements, calibration, and sign bar adjustment. So let's look at a comparative measurement. As an example, I have a one inch gauge block or Joe block that I set up on a surface plate. And next to it, I have a one, two, three block. And I'm going to comparatively measure one to the other. Comparative measurements don't give you a dimension. They tell you if two things are the same. Now, if I had a tolerance to respect, I would make two sets of Joe blocks, one at the top of the tolerance, one at the bottom, and I would compare them to my part. As long as my part was within both, well, I'd know it would be correct. So let's take a look at a comparative measurement. Now, comparative measurements like that, especially if we use two stacks, one high and one low, just on the top and bottom of the tolerances, well, are excessively accurate. But remember, they don't give us a specific dimension. They tell us, is the part good or is it not good? And that's important. It's the only thing that counts, really. And since our gauge or Joe blocks are extremely accurate, well, we can measure a part very, very accurately. Now, also, we can use Joe blocks for gauging or calibrating tools. And obviously, I could use this gauge block directly to calibrate my one inch micrometer. And to do that, well, I set my micrometer on my gauge block, making sure that everything's very clean getting the proper friction, the one that I want, on there and verifying if my tool is properly adjusted. And if not, well, adjust it properly. But if I don't want to wear down my gauge blocks too much by calibrating constantly my tools with them, and like I said, wearing it down or scratching it, I can comparatively measure my gauge block to my small calibrating tool that often comes with the micrometer to verify if that's good and just to maintain an accuracy in the shop. Now we can also use our Joe blocks to support sign bars and to describe very accurate angles. And for that, well, it's just a question of using the proper Joe block stack uh, to get the proper height to describe the angle we want. And we'll be looking at this process at the end of this video. Now, Joe blocks are blocks. And that means that they have six sides to them. But only two of those six sides are accurate gauging surfaces. So when we manipulate a Joe block or a gauge block, we want to hold it by the surfaces that aren't accurate gauging surfaces. 
because obviously we want to damage those surfaces the least amount possible. When I pull the Joe block from its case at the start of the day, well, it should be coated with a protective film. Now, each manufacturer of Joe blocks will recommend their own product. That protective coating has to be removed with a specific gauge block cleaner. Again, specific to the company of gauge blocks that you're going to have. Now, if you pull the block from the case, that means that you're going to have to clean it with the gauge block cleaner at the start and with a tissue that does not have wood in it. So no paper-based tissues. A paper contains wood, wood contains abrasives, and abrasives will attack your gauge blocks. So uh, microfiber, like the ones we use for glasses, although they're a little expensive, or a 100% cotton uh, tissue will do for cleaning your gauge blocks. So they have to be very clean. Now, once I've used the gauge blocks and I want to put them away at the end of the day, well, I'm going to have to recoat them with that protective film. But be careful to wash them very well before you coat them because your fingers have oils, natural oils, and a certain level of acidity that will actually etch steel surfaces. You want to get all that off of the gauge block before you recoat it and put it away. Now, sometimes, especially when we're going to be working with sign bars, we're going to have to stack Joe blocks to get a specific dimension. And to stack Joe blocks, there's certain things that you need to know. First is that everything has to be very clean. So I'm going to stack a 4 inch gauge block or Joe block and a 1 inch. Joe Glock. So I've already cleaned these with the surface with the gauge block cleaner and now they're very clean. I'm going to put on one of the surfaces that I'm going to stack a very 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 light amount of lanolin or if you prefer forehead oil. And then I'm going to ring the blocks together. And that means that I'm going to push them together. They're very clean. Push them together and twist them into place. And then they'll be stacked. And they should hold that way uh, with quite a good resistance. So let's look at that. And there you go. My Joe blocks or gauge blocks are stacked. We also call this in some places ringing Joe blocks. Two last things before we get to our calculations. And that is one, wear blocks. Now obviously if we want to maintain the integrity of our everyday gauge blocks, well, we don't want the ends to come in contact with anything else but another gauge block. And that is why wear blocks exist. Wear blocks are blocks that go on the end of stacks of Joe blocks or gauge blocks. So that when I put the stack standing up on a surface plate, well, it's always the same side of a wear block that touches the other surface and in between all that all the gauge blocks come in contact with our other gauge blocks so it's a way to protect our main gauge block set and if our wear blocks do get worn down well all we have to do is get new wear blocks we don't have to physically change all our set because all the blocks are a little bit damaged so that's wear blocks and the other thing is that when we stack gauge blocks, we want to use the least amount of gauge blocks as possible. And to do that, there's a method which is the T calculation. 
and we're going to take a look at that right now. Each gauge block has an amount of error incorporated into it. It's a physical thing. It exists so it has some error. So I want to use the least amount of gauge blocks in any given stack of gauge blocks. And for that we're going to do the T calculation. And it's called a T calculation because it starts with something that looks like a T. And up at the top here we're going to write down the length or the size of the stack of gauge blocks that I want to produce. And in this case 1.6751 inches or if I say it properly 1 inch 675 thousandths of an inch and 1 ten thousandths of an inch. Now to do that most people would attack it backwards and that means that they'd say oh I'm going to use the 1 inch to start with then I'm going to probably take the 0.5 and oh, I can't finish that. The reality is that there's only one gauge block that you can use to take care of the ten thousandths and very few that you can use to take care of the thousandths and so on. So you want to start at the other end and eliminate from this side back instead of from the front forward. Uh, and that's very important. Also, if you're using wear blocks, your first thing you're going to have to put down are your two wear blocks. And we're going to do this one as if we were using wear blocks. So we're going to say, first choice is 0.2 inches. And that's, I'll put a little W here. That's my two wear blocks, two one hundred thousandths of an inch wear blocks. So basically how the T calculation works is it's this minus that and I bring it back to this side. So minus this, 1.6751 minus 0.2 is going to be 1.4751 minus new line. What I want to do is eliminate my ten thousandths of an inch. So here, I have one ten thousandths. I have only one gauge block that will take care of that for me. And it's a point one zero zero one minus, come back, one point three seventy five zero. I have 375 to take care of. What can I use? What I want to do is eliminate the five thousandths of an inch. Now, I have only one gauge block that has a five thousandths of an inch on it. And that gauge block in my set is 0 0.1050. So, minus, come back, one point. Two seven zero zero. Now I have one point two seventy. What do I have that I can use to get rid of this seventy thousandths of an inch? And I have a point one thirty and a point one forty. So point one thirty will be one point one. 0 minus 0.140 and that'll be a 1.000 and what I need now is a 1 inch and I have one. So I've ensured that I've gotten rid of all my decimals with the least amount of gauge blocks possible. So I have a 0.2 for where, 0 0.101, 101, 0 0.105, 0 0.130, 0 0.140, and 0 0.1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 gauge blocks. Now that includes the two wear blocks. But if you're looking for uh, gauge block assemblies, you're always going to want to be somewhere between 5 and 7 if you're using wear blocks. And obviously, it's going to be between 3 and 5 if you're not going to be using wear blocks. 
And at the end, as we always do, we verify that we calculated properly. So this ends up at zero. And if I add this side, I should end up with my original distance. So let's take a look. One ten thousandths of an inch, five thousandths of an inch, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, and one inch. 1.6751, 1 1.6751, everything works out, I'm good to go. I could go over to the workbench now and mount or assemble that stack of Joe blocks. So let's take a few seconds to talk about the sign bar. Now, sign bars are the most accurate way in most shops to position a part at or to measure a angle. Now, it's very accurate because it uses very accurate Joe blocks to position it height wise to get to that appropriate angle. Now, for us, we're going to go over to the whiteboard and explain the basic principles and do our calculations. But for what? Well, we are going to try and calculate the height of Joe blocks required to position our sign bar at very precisely 20 degrees. And once we've done that, we're going to come and check this angle block, which is a bit like a Joe block, but it's at a specific angle. And this one should be 20 degrees. Now it's brand new. I don't know if it's any good. We'll check it. And we'll do that by positioning our sign bar at its proper height, and then coming and over with our dial indicator and checking the surface. So let's go over to the whiteboard and check that out. So let's take a look at the basic principle of a sign bar. Now, if I look up here, I can see that I have a reference surface. Let's say it's the top of a surface plate, very accurate surface. And on that surface plate, if I deposit two very accurate cylinders of almost identical diameter, very, very accurate, and I space them accurately apart, center to center, in this case, five inches, because most sign bars are five inch sign bars. Now, and on top of those two cylinders, if I placed a very accurate steel bar, well, I would fully expect the top of the bar to be parallel to the surface plate. It would be normal to expect that. But it would also be normal to expect that if I raised one of the two cylinders by a certain amount, that I would still have a five inch distance center to center. I haven't changed the spacing between those cylinders. But I would also expect that the top of my accurate steel bar would no longer be parallel to the surface plate. And that's the basic principle. And what we're doing really is we're creating a right angle triangle. Well, if I take this here and transpose it, uh, in a more visible fashion, I can see that I end up with a right angle triangle that has an unknown angle and a hypotenuse of 5 inches. I also don't know the height of the gauge block uh, stack that I need. And that's simply because I don't know the angle. If I knew this angle, well I could calculate the height of the stack using sine that we saw in our last video. And we know that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. So in our case here, sine would be the unknown sign divided by 5 inches, which is our hypotenuse. And doing that calculation for a given angle will give us the height of the gauge blocks that I need to get that angle. It's as simple as that. So we want 20 degrees. And we have a right angle triangle that has a hypotenuse of 5 inches because my sign bar is a 5 inch sign bar. Now, if we remember what we saw last week, we know that sine of an angle for a right angle triangle, sine of an angle equals opposite sine over hypotenuse. I don't know my opposite sign, that is what I need to find out. That's going to be the height of my gauge block stack. So, sine of the angle, sine of 20 degrees 
equals unknown side divided by 5 inches or over the hypotenuse. Now if I bring things over to isolate my unknown, I get sine 20 degrees times 5 because I multiplied both sides by 5, simplified, and I end up with sine 20 times 5 equals unknown. So 20 sine times 5 equals 1.7101 inches. And that is the height of the Joe Block stack that I have to produce to get that 20 degree angle. But as we saw at the start of this video, I'm going to have to figure out what Joe Blocks I'm going to use to get that 1.7101 in the least amount of Joe Blocks possible. So let's wipe this back and do that calculation. So I'm going to do my T calculation and here I'm not going to be using wear blocks. So we're just going to go with the ten thousandths of an inch first. Remember we want to eliminate the smallest decimal first and work our way back. So I know that I have a block that measures point one zero zero one. And that takes care of my ten thousandths of an inch. So I subtract and bring back over 1.6100. Now, 610, how am I going to get rid of that? Well, I'm going to have to get rid of my 10 thousandths of an inch, and for that, I'm going to use my 0 0.110 uh, Joe Block. Subtract, bring back 1.5. Zero, 0, and I'm going to use my 0.5 Joe Block, obviously subtract 1.000 left, I'm going to use my 1.000 Joe Block, my 1 inch Joe Block, and that comes down to 0, and obviously if I add up here, I got 1 ten thousandths, 1 one, two, three, four zeros, four zeros is zero. We got one, 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 two, five, six, seven, seven, and one. One point seven one oh one, one point seven one oh one. Everything's copacetic. What I want here is a stack of Joe blocks that's going to incorporate a point one oh oh one, a point one ten, a point five, a one inch. So one, two, three, four Joe blocks in that stack. Let's go get that stack made up and check our angle. So here's my stack of Joe blocks. I'm going to set it under the sign bar. So my sign bar is at 20 degrees. I have my Joe blocks installed and I've installed my part that is supposed to be at 20 degrees. So if I use my dial indicator on my surface gauge here and come and run over that surface, I should be getting a reading of zero. So let's take a look at that. So there you go. I'm getting a reading of zero, which means that everything is what it should be. My Joe Block stack is the right dimension. I am at 20 degrees and my part that I'm verifying is good. So I hope that answers all the questions that I've been getting about Joe Blocks, sign bars, and trig. Happy machining! Mm -hmm.